don't protect every direction of force. And in some sports, uh, a helmet just isn't part of the equipment, like basketball or soccer. Hockey has a small type of helmet. They just don't protect you against all the directions of forces that come into play. You can get forces on top of your head, on the side, on the back, but under the shin, there's nothing to protect that except for a physiologically positioned jaw. Putting your jaw in its physiologic rest position brings the actual jawbone away from the skull so that when you receive that force from an impact, that force doesn't get translated through the joint into that cradle of the skull, injuring the brain. You're demanding work lifestyle and need of fire-resistant clothing that can keep up? Well, L4FR clothing should be your go-to for quality, affordability, safety, and style. L4FR was founded by a third-generation oil field worker who is also a veteran. Thus, this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity, all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To give you our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. Si habla espanol. Let's talk some East Texas realignment. Hello, everybody. Terry Bennett here, sideline to sideline, brought to you by Power Plus Mouth Guard right here on L4 Media. And we're going to be talking a little East Texas 2A through 4A realignment with NETSN Brett. Of course, you can check out NETSN.live for all that's going on in East Texas high school sports, whether it be football, baseball, basketball, softball, Brook Hill, wrestling. Dude, they have it all. Well, I don't mean actually high school wrestling. That's a different uh, type of show we talk about, though. Uh, but Brett will be joining me today to talk a little bit of East Texas realignment, uh, 4A through 2A. You know, a couple, about what, about a month ago, we had the guys that are coming on for Syntex. They're joining me, or they joined me, and we had a show welcoming them, and we kind of talked about realignment and Syntex. Uh, I'm going to have a couple other of these shows coming up. In fact, I'm going to have a really cool thing with Chris Welch out of, of the Bushland Media, the Bushland Falcons. Uh, he might actually be joining me in studio here in a couple weeks uh, to talk Bushland, to talk their region, their district, and all that with realignment. And we're going to be doing this through the rest of the offseason. Uh, we're going to have coaches. Uh, we're going to have the coaches that are at new jobs. Uh, we have a couple of coaches shows that we're about to have that are going to be going forward. We'll be announcing those as well. And just kind of every like two episodes a week uh, for the rest of this off season and, and until we kind of get near coach school. Of course, we have the big power plus mouth guard coaches school uh, that we're going to be at again like we were last year. This year it's in San Antonio. Uh, but we're going to be walking around talking with 2A, 3A, and 4A coaches, getting them uh, to come over to the booth. We're going to have a, a ton of interviews. We're going to have a ton of other stuff uh, out there as well. Uh, so be, again, staying tuned for all that. And if you're trying to, you know, figure out where to find us, if you're new to us, uh, you can find us on Facebook. Just type in Sideline to Sideline. You can find us on Twitter, at Grant and Terry. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube, L4 Media Company. Uh, let's see. You can find us on S2SSports.com, S2SGrantandTerry.com. We're everywhere. Uh, and that's part of the reason why we're kind of late on some of these is we're doing more now at L4 Media in the offseason than we were doing during what we consider the busy season with the football stuff. And, and that's because the channel has exploded, and we appreciate everybody that's coming uh, to the, our YouTube channel and, and checking out our videos. Our numbers now are, are we're getting more views per stuff 
in this offseason than we do, you know, last year. And that's what we wanted. That's that growth we wanted. Um, but it means that we're doing so much more stuff in the offseason uh, that – I'm trying to find the time to do everything. We have uh, happy hours uh, that intern Noah and I do for outdrink the coverage. Uh, we do those every other Monday. If you want to calibrate that as you're listening, uh, we're doing one tonight, which is April 22nd. We'll have a happy hour this month, uh, this Monday. Now we will also have a happy hour next Monday as well. Cause we're going to recap the totality of the NFL draft, which of course is happening this weekend. Oh, and by the way, Thursday, intern Noah, intern Noah and I will be live from 6 p.m. Central till the end of the first round of the NFL draft. He'll be here with me in studio. We'll be watching the draft. We'll be giving our opinions. We'll be having Brett from NNTSN uh, joining us, as will Ryan Fox, our uh, outdrank the uh, coverage uh, reporter. He also covers the Rangers and other stuff for us. He's also doing some high school stuff for us. So as I the whole point is, Really extremely busy time of the year. This is what we wanted, but it, it, it's been kind of hard to figure out when to fit things in. So we're fitting in the high school stuff now for the April going forward. That's kind of the perfect time. I've already got a few coaches interviews I've done. We'll drop probably kind of try to drop like, like an episode like this, where it's me and, and, and another media person. And we're talking about a region or a specific thing. I want to have Matt Diggs on here soon, of course, to talk about pilot point. We'll of course have coach. We'll, we will have coach Chad world uh, here soon on. We'll have a son on. Of course we do their mineral well show. And again, yes, just in case you uh, haven't heard, we will be doing a pilot point coaches show this year uh, with coach Chad world. And, and I'm excited about that. I uh, missed doing a show with him as he was at Burleson Centennial last year. It's good to have him back in the area. And, and so we'll drop like one of those each week with one with a media member. And we'll do all that all the way up into May. And of course, at the very end of July, I think, or June, I think the way we did it last year was the week before coaches, uh, coaches school, uh, which is right in the middle of J uh, July. I think that's when we had our first off-season show, and I think it was Toughest uh, Districts or maybe uh, – it might have been Dark Horses. Uh, but it, we'll probably have that same schedule uh, for Grant and I when he's back in studio and we're starting to get back rolling. And, of course, we're going to have our Big R's preview show in our early August. And then before you know it, the season's going to be starting off. And, and that's kind of why this is the perfect place to put this and to start these for the off-season – is you're starting to get that taste. I, I I got the email the other day telling me that my Dave Campbell's was, you know, uh, they were re-upping everything and, you know, making sure that we get the media copy. And that, that's the email that always kind of gets me ready to go and ready to go into high school football and to really start talking it for the current year. So I got that last week. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do it East Texas style again. Brett of NETSN will be joining me. You can find them online at NETSN.live. Uh, you can also find them in your app store on your uh, Android or iPhone. Just type in NETSN Live. And, and it, they're doing the, – the East Texas app is doing what Dave Campbell's does for the state. They're doing it for East Texas. It's really, really awesome. They've just added forums. They're trying to get that st to, to start going. So check that out online again, NETSN.Live, or in your app store on your Android or your iPhone. All right. We're going to take a break, and when I come back, Brett will join me, and we're going to just talk East Texas realignment, 2A to 4A. What are his thoughts? What is his thoughts on Chapel Hill's new district? Not a lot changing. Uh, in fact, that's kind of the message of East Texas. There, there wasn't a ton of shifting. I think, you know, you never know exactly what we're going to get each realignment. But I think a lot of people thought there'd be a lot more movement inside East Texas, and there really wasn't. But we're going to talk about all that when we come back right here on Power Plus, Mouth Guard, Sideline to Sideline on F4 Media. Hey, I mean, that was a good point. I think okay. we might start seeing some go back. All right, Terry Bennett. Back 
here, sideline to sideline, brought to you by Power Plus Mouth Guard, right here on L4 Media. We're now joined by our East Texas show host, NETSM Brett. Brett Sweeney, how are you doing today, buddy? You've been a, a busy broadcaster the last nine months or so. Man, I don't know how many games we pumped out, Terry, but it's uh, yeah, it's been been good busy though. I've actually been uh, kind of on the mend. Just had ankle surgery uh, a few weeks ago, so I've been. I'm on the IR as far as broadcasting goes, at least I'm, at least for the time being. Now we have our our uh, annual um, our title sponsor of our network, uh, Zay Orthopedics. They have a All Star basketball uh, game every year, uh, girls and boys, and we have a dunk contest and shooting contest. That is this Saturday, um, so I'll be kind of shaking off the rust and getting back in the uh, in the broadcasting mood. But other than that. I've kind of uh, enjoyed watching some baseball. We've got it all over the place. Baseball and softball right now is kind of in full swing, and uh, but I've kind of got to sit back. It's been kind of nice. I've I've got great guys and great crews on site that are uh, taking care of it for me, and uh, just things are doing great here at Netizen. Hey, and you, you know you you had the the issue right at the best time for you being a big basketball fan. Also, you're a hockey fan. You, you know, you've been getting to see the stars close oh, up really, really high. Man. I'm I'm pumped for hockey playoffs, Terry. I, I'm I just I have am, golden. I hate getting them in the first round. I know, man, I know but but good news is we have home home ice, and we could get them out of the way early. Yeah, they want they don't have to worry about them anymore. So, I mean, I I'm, I am nervous, but um, I think this is a as good a chance. Like with the, we've got a great combination of, you know. Good quality, you know, older leaders on the team. You've got, you know, Ben and Sagan and Pavelski and those guys. And you got that youth movement coming up uh with with Robertson. You got Hintz and Wyatt Johnson and Wyatt Johnson's really stepped up here too. Just they've got they've got the right mixture. This is it. If 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 Ottinger can play like Ottinger's played the last two or three weeks, then they've got a really good chance. I, I really do think it's gonna be the back end is going to – they're going to score goals, but can the back end play? I, I like what they've done with, with Tanev. They added him. I, I've liked what he's done. Um, man, it's, I'm, I'm excited. I'm pumped. If you can tell, I'm I'm, I'm really ready for some hockey. Uh, the hockey and basketball. I mean, again, no, intern Noe and I were talking about it on one of the happy hours, but it seems like – we we've turned a corner in Dallas, you know. Everything's winning right now, Terry. It's kind of weird. I mean, it's that cycle. You know, 2011 we were there. Mm-hmm. You had the Mavericks winning a a, a title. You had the Rangers, even though they collapsed back to back World Series. You had the Cowboys kind of struggling, but you know they were they were at least competitive. And now this year, I, I don't even remember the last time, but every team, every major sport, I'm not counting MLS, and I love FC Dallas, but we're talking about major sports. Every major sports for Dallas is making the playoffs this year. And you could make a case that every one of them should have gone far. Now, we know what happened with the Cowboys, but – you know, the Mavericks and the – but, again, the Mavericks, they have a tough one, too. They get the Clippers for the end of the playoff trilogy rivalry between those two teams that have sprouted up in the last five years. Well, I, I like that, too. Um, we talked about the Stars, but the Mavericks, the way the bracket looks, and I don't know if, if you looked at it, we don't have Denver on our side of the bracket, yeah. which I like that. I know the Thunder stumped us the other night, but they didn't play anybody. I think everybody was – did you see the injury report? It was like yeah. – <laughs> <laughs> it's like they didn't they let them win on purpose there's no way they wanted them in the one seed i think uh personally but you know it worked out um they get who they wanted I, you don't have to worry about the play-in game any of that nonsense going on they got a spot um you know you have to beat who's in front of you when you got the best player on the floor the best my opinion the best player in the league and luka Doncic. It, uh it's it's always a good thing so mm-hmm. i you never know. I mean, they're they're playing well. They they've kind of trended up here toward the end too. They were in that play in battle for a while, and they've kind of creeped up and and were able to get all the way up to five. So, I'm excited about both. It's going to be awesome playoff season. They're right all here together. It's just it's a great time in Dallas sports right now. It's a great time in high school football. As we're basically, I mean, this is one of those you know, it's April, but you blink and it's going to be July, and we're all get you know reading Dave Campbell's, and we're all. In fact, I just got the email the other day that it's time to read up Dave Campbell's, and kind of got me all excited and stuff. Uh, and, and again, this year, what's been real fun has been the fact that it's been realignment. Grant and I have had our talks about it. 
Uh, Matt Diggs and I are going to talk about it. I've got coaches interviews that are about to roll out that are going to talk about it. Uh, and so I wanted to talk to you about East Texas because East Texas in 4A through 2A is a power region. Uh, and at the end of the day, I mean, there, there were some changes, but I don't think East Texas shifted anywhere near what people thought they were uh, at these classifications. No, it's it's pretty much the same. You have a few, you go up, you go down, a little bit of a shift, but not not much. I mean, we're looking here at, you know, Conference 2A, Division One here to start off, and uh, I think the major shift is going to be, uh, there's going to be a bussy list Region 3. I think that's, uh, you know, Timson finally got their championship, and so it'll be interesting to see um, what they do. They're, they're going to have a new, they have a new head coach now, um, as their coach retired. And so you've still got, um, Shelbyville, St. Augustine Garrison, uh, in that district there. But I mean, man, this, this region though, um, Beckville, I, I still like this region. I mean, there's some really good teams in this region, uh, Terry. Uh, this is, this is one of the conferences to me that's exciting as far as the matchups, yeah, and you could have a first round matchup of just a doozy yep. in the first round. Um, you know, I haven't really looked at you know, a lot of the teams yet to see you know what they're going to look like as far as returning and all that. We hadn't got that far in, but yeah, um, I got to see a lot of these schools in the playoffs last year. We got to cover. I got to see uh, Timson. I got to see Garrison. Uh, I got to see uh, a little bit of uh, Beckville as well. Um, and this this region is going to be going to be good. I think it's more open though now. I think um, everybody's you know gave gave Terry Bussey a standing ovation and said congratulations. Uh, see you now. Everybody else has got a better chance. I think it's more open. I think you've got you've got a lot of schools that can really step up here. I, I think it's more open, but I think Timpson's right there at the end again. Um, yeah. I, I think that. You know, Garner coming in last year and, and having yeah. to play early. That, that is, you know, I know it sucks when you, you've got a legend like, you know, Terry Bussey and you want to see him play and all, but man, there's no coach that has the issue with, with the doctor saying, hey, your star guy is going to have to be out for these games that don't count. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have plenty of time to get your younger guys to get some snaps and key positions. Yeah. And it just made them better. Yeah. Uh, and so, but you're right. I mean, I, you know, we'll have to see. And, and like, like you said, we're not trying to claim that we know all who's coming back for every team or not. But like, you know, Cooper, they lost a lot. We'll have to see what they can do at the top half of that bracket. You've got Paul Pewitt now that's dropped down into this. And, and that just alone, they're finally back on even footing population wise. Mm -hmm. Now, does that, will that matter? We'll see because it also felt like they've had some athletic uh, athlete issues as well. But I, I mean, again, just putting them, them down back at this level will help. Uh, and region three, man, whoever comes out of it, man, they are going to have earned it. It's going to be a slog. I, th this is one of those where there might not be a bad playoff game in region three. Yeah. I, I hope we get to cover some this year as far as uh, picking some of these, these games up. I mean, these, the games we saw last year, I was, I was so impressed. Um, but yeah, you're, you're right. JJ Garner, Man, and they didn't even have him. He he gets hurt. I mean, he's been he carried the load a lot of the season with Bussy kind of out of the lineup, and they're clicking all cylinders. And he gets hurt, and they win state without him. Well, and don't so forget, he, he's going to be hungry. They had another player that had to to sit out for off the field issues. Right. That was their big three. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's kind of funny because it feels fitting that they won. This year, with it being, you know, Bussy's senior year. But I would make the case that by the end of the year, because of injuries and off the field issues, this team probably was not as good as last year's team that lost to Refurio in that classic where they just couldn't stop Refurio in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I mean, you're right because they had all the same pieces. Um, and it was almost, I think it's almost fitting too for me is, um, it made Terry Bussey have to carry the load, and he was able to step up and finish off out of all the battles and struggles that he's had getting past, you know, the the Region Four. Yeah. Um, that's what that's where they hit their wall every year, and so I think it was awesome that, you know, he didn't. There's no no one else did it. I mean, he had obviously he had help on the field, but 
he was the catalyst to for this team to win, and you know, he was able to finish it off. I was happy for him. To me, it was one of those uh, you could write a a movie or a book about. Yeah, honestly, the way this season went. I mean, um, I'm sure that that Timson, the city, and the community will never forget it. But I, I, I'm I'm excited to see what Garner is going to do. You know how he's going to be the guy. So well, what's what's that going to look like? You know, is he going to they going to pop him back in at quarterback like they kind of did when Tim, when a Bussy was out, or is he going to they have somebody else to plug in there? Is he going to be the tailback? So it'll be interesting to see kind of what it, and will there be any kind of scheme changes? You know, new head coach, you know, that's always a a deal. I'm sure they're probably going to keep a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, that we're doing, but you just they never know. In, right? Yeah, I think so. But yeah. you just never know. You get a new guy, going to change up a little bit of things. I mean, so we'll see. It'll be interesting. But uh, I know uh, the the Prince kid from Beckville's is going to be returning. I know he's a he's a pretty good. He's a stud. Yeah. Um, and so we'll see. I know Beckville. Um, they're wanting some revenge. I'm sure. So man, it's just this just some good rivalries in this region, and and it's going to be like you said. Uh, a fight for the fittest. It's one of those the hunger games. <laughs> whoever, whoever survives out of this region. Yeah. Uh, can, can they survive and then have enough left to get past the last two games? That's always been the question. I think Timson finally was able to do that after a couple of seasons, but they're, I think that's really you either challenge yourself and you just run out of gas or you challenge yourself and you're so prepared. You're ready to run over anybody. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. All right, let's go to class two, a division two. Again, Region 3, and it's really just two districts uh, in Region 3. Though I will say that the talk of not only this conference, this division, but the state of Texas is what District 10 is with Bremont and Chilton and Mart. And, 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 you know, Chilton's a team that has everybody coming back. And if they were in any other district, they would not only be district favorites, but state favorites. And there still might be state favorites, but you can't really call them uh, uh, district favorites when you've got Mart there. So that's going to be fun. Uh, but for ones that we talked to, District 9 and District 10, again, a lot of shuffling, but nothing like major. Celeste is back over in class, t- over in Region 3 after they had spent two years in a weird, they were out with Munster and Collinsville and Chico and Santo and all them. And that was a weird fit for them. So it's good to get them back into the Northeast Texas and, and also in a district that's very winnable for them. Uh, D- uh, Demetrius Rector, the head coach has done a wonderful job there and, and built a consistent playoff team that was in a tough district. I think this is a, an, an easy district. In fact, they might be the other side favorite uh, once you get back into the region final in a district 10, uh, because I think district 11 with Alto and all them, that's going to be a slog of a battle. Man, right there, man. I- I'm looking at that one. I'm like, hmm, that's going to be. You got Love Lady in there. You've got uh, Overton, Tenahaw. Now we got to see with Overton what's going to happen. You know, Overton does this once every nine, 10 years. Yeah. They win 11 games and then we don't hear from them again. Tenahaw, Coach Ward is out. They're having some issues with coaching. Alto, how are they going to respond now that they're back legal? <laughs> hey, they're legally in the in the same district that they were in. Now they can actually compete for a playoff spot. Good. And you know how do you how do you go how do you turn that back on you know that's hard to do you know you can say what you want and the coaches can say all the right things and the players can say all the right things but it, it's not just like you've been non competitive for one year but for two years and so how they respond that's going to be that's going to probably be what decides what happens in this region to be honest with you because Alto has always has the talent and, and it, that was the crappy thing about what they did is because, yeah, they might not have been able to compete with Timpson, but they had a good team for those two years that at least could have been a, a part of the tapestry that is Region 3 playoffs. Yeah, I'm looking here, Terry, and you may be able to answer this question. Um, Carlisle was in this district. Where did Carlisle fall? I uh, I can't remember. I, I they, they, might- weren't, they weren't in the other dis- – they weren't in the other one either, so. They weren't? No. You sure? I don't think so. I mean, I'm looking through here in two A. They they weren't. They're not big enough to move up to three A. I don't think. Oh right? gosh, no. Uh, that's let the one. Me, I was, let was, me because Carlisle was in here with uh, they were with Alto and and Overton in that district, Mount Enterprise. This is on the fly right here. We're on the yeah. fly. 
I'm just I'm just looking. I'm thinking Carlisle. You know, uh, their coach left, and they kind of had kind of regressed last year. But yeah, they regressed well, a lot more than I think people thought they were going to do. Uh, Clay Baker going up to uh, Henderson. Yeah, I don't I know. Just, I'm just kind of looking, trying to see where else they would be able to fit. But I. I don't know. Oh, yeah, District Eight, Region Two. Oh, they're in Region Two. Oh, yeah. Okay. oh, yeah. Were, that's right. okay. So that's actually we need to talk about that district anyway because that's kind of that's that's, that's kind of the Texas yeah. district. Okay, we'll go back, step back. Let's talk about them a little bit. Yeah, I didn't even see them over there, Terry. I so that's with Frankston and Crossroads and Kearns. Okay, so they completely they they moved up, and so yeah. they, that's going to be tough for Carlisle. Then uh, Frankston was pretty solid last year. They had a pretty good season. Uh, I mean, it's but, it's it's tough, but they're not in an unwinnable playoff spot. Is this, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, not, they're not in Region Three. That's a break. I mean, one hundred percent. You're not wrong there. Uh, and when you look at everybody else in this region, uh, this region's you know you got Coleman Blue Cats are always really really good. Uh, you know, Wolf City. We'll see what they're going to do. They're over in this region now. Um, you know, I th this isn't a this isn't an oh my god region. Right. The, 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 every good team in this region is going to go into training camp in August thinking they not only have a chance to to make the playoffs but to go far in the playoffs. I'm gonna, I'm going to make a I'm going to make a statement here. Tell me if you agree with me. I think moving up, they're actually have an easier region. Well, yeah, that's where, what that's where exactly. they would. Where they would have been, even not even even not in Region Three, um, in this classification, but where they were with the district you just talked about with Chilton, Vermont, and Mart. I mean, yeah. gosh, they just I don't know. They got some extra students, and it helped them out. So yeah, maybe going up, the best thing to happen to you again, depending on the region. Mm -hmm. Sometimes going down is the worst thing that can happen to you again. You know, depending on the region, you, you get like the, the the Mount Pleasants and all them. You know, when they drop down, you know, everybody thought, man, they're gonna they're gonna all, uh, automatically contend because hey, that's what Chapel Hill and Henderson did when they dropped down and all, and they didn't because where they dropped down. But then you look at the Sulphur Springs, they dropped down in a district that was solid, good, but nothing. Oh my God. And so they they've now made the playoffs two straight years, and they look at themselves as a you know a, a playoff contender again this year. So it's not always dropping down or up; it's where. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I I hadn't noticed that by when I looked through the uh, the reasons before, but that's that's an interesting uh, move there for uh, Price Carlisle there. All right, let's now go up to 3A Division One and look at East Texas. And again, we have East Texas. This is one of those, and you and I were talking about this off the air. Uh, in three A's where you really start to see that straight line right across East Texas where region two is usually, usually North Texas. Uh, and then region three is usually South East Texas. Sometimes that can blur a little bit too, but, uh, in region two, you've got, you know, district seven, North Texas, Northeast Texas, Commerce, Eustis, Malakoff, Mineola, Mount Vernon, Rains, Will Winsboro. That's a really strong top heavy <laughs> district. And, and you've got teams like Commerce that I think that they feel that they're ready to not only become a playoff team, but try to be a district threat. But then you've got Malakoff sitting right there. And, and then let's see what Winsboro does. I know they're losing everything, but, you know, Winsboro was good before the last two years as well. And I still think that they have the ability to be consistently good. Mount Vernon, you know, year two of Clayton George at head coach. So I, I know it's Malakoff, but I think all of seven can be interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting region. Um, we we cover some of these schools and other uh, sports, and uh, I know you know losing Finney at quarterback is going to hurt Winsboro. He's kind of been their catalyst over the last few years, but we'll see if his dad has someone else in uh, that he can plug in there and and uh, keep the run going for them. Of course, you talked about Malakoff. You don't have to say anything else. Those they grow they grow men in Malakoff. Those guys are. The, the the cough we call them, and I'm telling you, winning that, winning, finally winning that state championship. That look at how it did with Franklin when they finally won, and, and how, I mean it, it. It can start that ball rolling downhill to where you look up and Malakoff has won three out of the next four years, and, and it, it there is. I'm telling y'all that there's something about when you finally do it, 
it, it, it just it, it takes that program. And some programs finally do it, and then they fall, fall back. But Malakoff's been so good for so long now. Uh, and, and honestly, you know, it looks like it's going to be a – Grandview, you know, Malakoff possible type of Region 2 final again over in Region 3. Well, let's go to District 8. You got Atlanta, Gladewater, Sabine, Jefferson, Tatum, Liberty Ilo, Brad Willard, the head coach there now who was at uh, Mount Vernon. Uh, really interesting that he bounced up to be a an OC for one year in at a 5A and or 6A and then back right back to 3A. Now, to be fair, when he took the job, it, they were in 4A, but I think everybody knew Liberty Isle was going to drop. And, and I think Liberty Isle could be the team that drops okay. and all of a sudden they're gonna go. way better than people think. Yeah, I think with the athletes that Liberty Isle has, uh, I think they're going to really compete. You've got – this is a very athletic district. you got a lot of schools that have got some good athletes. Atlanta, always a really good athletic team. Jefferson, Tatum, we know has athletes. Gladewater – what do we get in Gladewater, Terry? What do you think? I mean, it's been – they've been through some struggles over there in Gladewater. We kind of counted them out early in the year, and then they went on a little late run there toward the end and, and showed a little bit of signs of life, but uh, they've struggled here as recently. Yeah, and it, it, I think with them, it's just they're in a – they're just right now in a, in a talent uh, issue. Uh, I, th- I think the coaching is good. Um I don't know if he's been as great as they thought when they brought him, you know, Johnny Levera came back home, but I don't think a lot of this is his issue by any stretch. Yeah. They're just having a talent deficit. Yeah. Tatum's yeah. having a talent deficit. You know, Tatum has a really good coaching staff that's won state championships at other places. And while they've made the playoffs the first two years, I don't think people feel like Tatum has taken that step. Well, it's not just coaching. Jefferson has a new coach. I can't think of his name. It's the old Pleasant Grove coordinator. That's a good move because Jefferson usually does have uh, the, the the war daddies. Jefferson's kind of like the Dallas Cowboys. They're, they're real pretty at times in the regular season, and then that first round, they just they, they can't seem to get over that hump. But you feel like if if they do finally get over that hump, they might could make a run again, especially in a in a region like this where you know it's really tough in some spots. But there's going to be some holes like District Six. You know, mm, we'll District see. Six. Pilot Point, which had, you know, World back and, and you know, Pottsboro's Pottsboro and Whitesboro. But still, I, there could be a hole in that playoff where if you get the right matchup from District 8 after you win your District 7 game, you could see yourself in a region final. But anyway, over in Region 3, uh, you know, it's more south, as we talk about, southeast Texas. Uh, Crockett, Dieball, Fairfield, uh, Huntington, Westwood, who is getting better and better each year. Uh, Teague, that's an interesting district. It's it's a lot of teams that either almost have or never quite can be really, really good. So somebody's got to win the district in that one. Yeah, somebody. I mean, it's a thing. Somebody has to win. I mean, Westwood's been been competitive over the last couple. Of, like you said, I think they're uh, they're a team that I look forward to uh, to take advantage of this district. I think they can. I, I think they're happy with that district. Yeah, I would say so. I would. I think Die Ball's happy with that district because Die Ball of those teams is probably the closest mm-hmm. to being a, a, a team that could truly be a region threat. And so I think I think at times they've been in such a tough district, it's just kind of beat the crud out of them. Mm-hmm. Now they're down here in a district again where the numbers will you know help them out a little bit. So it'll be interesting. But yeah, that's the kind of district you like to see in, in a realignment. All right, let's now flip over to as we do this on the fly. Uh, 3A Division uh, 2. That's right. Is it 2? Yes. Two, yeah. two. Whew, boy, it's been a long day. Uh, and this one, uh, you know, East Texas is basically, again, one region. Uh, region 3, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, north of, has now kind of become what Region 2 is. Um, you got, you know, Harmony. They lose a coach. They have a good core still, I think, coming back, you know, from that team that two years ago made that yeah. surprising run. They're lo- they're going to lose a lot of that. That group, that, a lot of that group was seniors. Uh, no, I can't uh, remember if they were juniors or seniors. Army. Yeah, yeah. Boston Seahorn, that group. They're they're a lot of that. They're going to lose a lot. We'll see what they bounce back with. Um, uh, they're, they're in a sh- district that they're, comp- they're going to be competitive, though. They're switching districts. Yeah, they're they're moving out of the uh, the ARP district. Uh, this district switched up a little bit, so it'll be get some new matchups. Um, so you got uh, now Buffalo. That's interesting. Buffalo in in with Arp and West Rusk and Troop and whatnot. Buffalo Buffalo's pretty far away from from the rest of those 
Um, Elkhart, maybe. Elkhart, uh, kind of the, I guess, the glue in between. I mean, I mean not- how, how far is that drive? Um, I think we're actually covering um, no, no spoiler, the, the spoiler, I guess, a little bit. Um, ARP and Buffalo. That's one of the games that we picked up for ARP. We do one game a year for ARP, and that's that's a drive. I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, we drive through that. You know, Grant and I end up going to the Houston area at least five times a year. And we always go through Buffalo and, you know, that's when I'm going through Buffalo, I'm not thinking, man, I bet them and Grant Celine are playing basketball later this year. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's interesting. But, um, no, I looked the first, look at the Harmony. That's, that's a switch up in district. So you've got Harmony, Harmony and Grant Celine at Edgewood. I believe they were all in this, in the, in the ARP district last year. Cause we kind of followed ARP around a little bit. Um, that's interesting. Now they're going to be with, uh, you know, some different teams. I mean, Harmony, you got to love that district. Yeah, it's a lot that easier than if you, you don't have to play West Rusk, you don't have to play Troop, you don't have to play. I think ARP will be okay. I think they've got some young talent. I, I think they're in a, I think it's an easier district. Now, if you, you look down at District 10, too, uh, you're not down there with Hooks and Dangerfield and any of those those guys. Well, you, Hooks is kind of like Harmony. They're going to lose a lot of what made them great. Um, but it's I think the, athletes though, they'll, they'll be, they'll be yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and hooks is always dangerous. Um, danger field is always dangerous themselves. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what decab does as, as they have kind of over the last couple of years kind of become relevant again, but they're in a really tough district, but not a, a district that I, I mean, I can see them getting third or fourth Hugh Springs, you know, a few years ago, you just always kind of wrote them in an eight and three. They've kind of really dropped the last couple of years. How will they build? And then in 11, like you said, you got Buffalo, but you got ARP, West Rusk, um, Troop. You know, Troop was the darling for a moment last year. Uh, they, they lose a lot. They well, lose Trey Davis lot. and, yeah. and the, the quarterback Herndon, Grayson Herndon, I think. They lose a lot in Troop. And, and the only thing I think they return a lot of is the defense. And the problem was the defense wasn't that good. Uh, and, and that, you know, that kind of became an issue, but, but anyway, that's three, a division two. hang on real quick. Cause again, no commercials. We're doing this on the fly. Look how pressured and high, uh-huh. high speed we are. We're yeah, like, we've, we've done a few shows, Terry. It's okay. yeah, we've, we've done a few shows. I'm just, I'm getting ready, man. I'm I, I, like I said, I got the email that telling me that my, uh, you know, it was about time to re up on, on Dave Campbell's. And so I went and got the loan from the bank to pay for that. And, you know, I'm all ready to go. And that just, that's always, it's, it, I always start getting the itch about this time. I'm ready to, to get out there, but all right, let's, uh, Oh, wait, I, I think I loaded the wrong one. Yeah. I loaded the wrong one. Hang on. We're going to do region two or uh, division two first. Okay. Let me load for, and we'll finish on four division one since that, you know, you are the, the Homer of, you know, yeah, the, maybe like, Maybe just a slight bit, you know, like bit. But. All right. So let's uh, look at 4A Division Two, And this is one that, again, you know, nothing changed majorly. You had some small shifts. Van left the bosom of Carthage and, and went into the longing arms of Pleasant Grove and Gilmer. I mean, which one? Is it? Is there any better? I mean, I, I don't know if one's better than the other. It's like going from uh, – from, the, the the mouth of one lion to another. I mean, I, I, think, I don't know. I still think if I was Van, I'd prefer to be in Carthage's district where I think they are a very much uh, this year. And again, I'm going off the top of my head, but I think they return a good amount to where they would be the prohibitive number two in district eight. And maybe you might even get the whole, Hey, if on the, you know, if on the right night, they might can give, you know, Carthage problems type, to now they're going into a district to where, dude, let's not just talk about Gilmer and, and Pleasant Grove, but Spring Hill was a little better last year. Lamar was better, but they lost their coach who, who decided to go back to being a coordinator. Uh, what will Pittsburgh have? And, and so I, I, I think Van moves into a tougher district. I still think they'll make the playoffs. Van, Van has got a lot coming back. Their, their 2B senior group is the group. Uh, Caden Rowe at, at receiver is uh, – he, he's also a good basketball player. I actually went to school with his with his mom um super athlete i mean just you throw the ball up he's gonna catch it so uh and they've got the the coach's sons i believe are um the quarterback and moffitt uh they've got the moffitts um i think they'll be fine i mean honestly i think they're a solid third in there uh just by looking at it. i think they're on par possibly. they could 
Yeah. They could get to the second, but I think you, you just look at it. I think, okay, third should be no no lower than yeah. third there with what they're looking at. You know who, what team's the happiest, and that's Canton. They oh, get a Carthage and Van. Man, Canton's, I don't know how much they paid. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they might they might compete for district in that. Uh, well, they better. I mean, mm-hmm. Fair, Kim, Clinton Ward, Sunnyvale. Now, Sunnyvale's not bad. They Do they have the Peterson uh, brother? No, you know, he, left, he left and their head coach, John Settle, who started oh. that school. Oh, well, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they went back That's to it. competitive, but, yeah, they're not – you know, they're not the team that almost beat Gilmer. Let's remember that. They almost beat Gilmer last yeah. year. I saw some of the highlights of that game, and he was impressive. That's why I was going to go back to uh, talking about uh, – Yeah, I think he's going to private school. Oh, well, mm, interesting. Well, Brook Hill, maybe they have some NIL money left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I don't know. I, I look at the, the district that intrigues me, though, Terry, is District 8. Yeah. Coach Harold in Athens got to be like – this is amazing. Like they have Carthage, I get it, but they're going to compete. The rest, I mean, the rest of these teams in here, I, I think they they make the playoffs this year. Every team outside of Carthage thinks they can be the number two team. Yeah, uh, I don't, I wouldn't agree with that. We have actually in that district. You know, we're, we'll be covering Rusk and Center. Yeah, we'll have a lot of the, these uh, teams this year on NetSN. So um, this is going to be a really up for grabs district. I'm I'm really excited to see where it goes. Um, but I think, um, you know, Athens has been competitive the last couple of years in the, the Chapel Hill district. And this is, I mean, Bullard, they've been right on the edge trying to make the playoffs. I think they got a chance to make the playoffs for the first time. Uh, it's been better. I mean, there, there's a lot of, you, you're getting four out of six getting in. So who's going to be left out? I mean, you know, Rusk has been competitive. Coach Sitton is always has a good group out there. Uh, man, it, this could be one of those that's like a funky tie at the end, Terry. I mean, honestly, um, I think Carthage is heading above the favorite. But any of the other five teams I could see making the playoffs. Yeah, the, the problem is, is I, I, I agree with everything you said. I think this will be one of the most enjoyable districts outside of what Carthage does. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is they match up with the playoffs where – at best, they might be even at, you know, maybe the district second place team could maybe beat the third place team. But again, are you really going to think a, a a Rusk if they finish second beats Van if they finish third? Yeah, I mean, who knows? They played some competitive games in this district last year, though. Uh, Van, Center, and Rusk were kind of all back and forth at each other, so you never know. But I think the the district itself is going to be. Uh, exciting and i'm ex- i'm excited that we have a lot of these games uh i'm just excited to see these ma- i mean i'm just saying the tiebreaker scenarios could be in effect oh i, I definitely agree outside you know, again outside of cartridge i, I think everybody's going to go into the last game uh, last uh game of the year with a chance to make the playoffs all right let's finish up with for a division one and again a lot like for a division two and a lot like all the other ones we've had some movement but it seemed like as a team dropped out a team perfectly dropped in like pine tree Mm -hmm. uh, is now in district nine and they add a little intrigue into that district i i think that you know first off it's kind of crazy to think that we're getting to the point dude where East Texas, true East Texas is one district in 4A now. It kind of is. You have Sulphur yeah. Springs over there in District 7. Harris, but that's more the you know, we, we covered yeah. them, but, you know, that's that's the north end of the debatable part mm-hmm. of East Texas, you know. Um, yeah. But, like, the, the the around Tyler, East Texas, the I-20 East Texas, it's one district in 4A, and it's crazy. Uh, are, and it's going to be a good one, though. <laughs> are you um, surprised that Solana stayed down? Well, so I I thought they were moving up. I, I thought that was assumed. In fact, I even told the sponsor of the Salina show, hey, we don't do a 5A show, so thanks for being a sponsor. We'd love to have you on for the North Texas. And then they stay down, and then I get told, oh, yeah, we – I guess maybe one of their – some of their projections a couple years ago had been a little off. Uh, mm-hmm. Growth has been a little bit slower. And that's why we were talking about – like you and I were talking off the air. Like if they do a 7A, a lot of these teams that just went up to 5A or teams that, you know, are – everybody thought is automatic 5A might end up back in 4A when that 
that stretch happens in that little rubber band. Um, but anyway, yeah. So them staying kind of shocked me. Yeah, Briscoe Panther Creek. They're they're a great. I thought cool they were. Group. I thought they were assuredly going up. Yeah, that's that though. That district's tough right there. I mean, right. I, I know. Frisco, Frisco Panther Creek might pull the Anna off. Now I know Anna had been a school for a lot longer, but I mean, be the team that kind of come out nowhere because Panther Creek, man, they have a lot. Almost everybody coming back. Yeah, and this is a team that legitimately got better week after week after week. And, and uh, you know, me and Matt on in the Dallas show or the we call it the North Texas show, you know, we we kind of just kept dismissing them and dismissing them. But man, they they are really, really, really good. Is it just me or is this region's not the strongest either? You need you know this the well, Dallas, this is a Dallas, the Dallas district, you know, that's a basketball district, but uh for football, it's never really all that good. Well, Carter's become solid. They're not great. Um, this is going to sound crazy, but Dallas Pinkston the last two years might be one of the best teams that didn't make the playoffs in both years uh, because they couldn't they couldn't get past the Salina Panther Creek Carter. Now, Kimball, the Kimball drop though, right? Kimball, not- but I mean they they've struggled in football like Carter has for the last twenty years. Um, but you, you know, you look at Alvarado's district, yes, them in the day, Lake Worth. Lake Worth just hired uh, the former DeSoto head coach who had won a st- uh, state championship for them a few years ago when Mathis left and ended up in Marshall for a couple years. And then he, uh, Peterman, I think his name is. So, I mean, Lake Worth, they've always got the good talent. They just can't yeah. get consistent. You got, uh, you got Stephenville and Brownwood and, and those over in Region 1. Maybe Decatur and District 5. I don't know. The Fort Worth schools don't usually – are easily competitive really either no but, but springtown and decatur both are good but but i think but, I, but it, i'm just saying it's it's takeable for that i mean i think district seven should be really happy with what they've got in front of them yeah no i i don't agree i don't disagree but but i think decatur and springtown and alvarado and kennedale and lake worth probably all feel the exact same way yeah that's pretty open i think that, that's course, what same way you you go over to Region Three, though, as we're talking about, you know, the East Texas District too, and you look at the Houston District, and they never do real well either. Uh, they struggle when it comes to the football. You know, the Dallas ones, you know, at least Carter will be competitive. At least H- Hutchins can be competitive. The Houston ones, man, they're not even. It, it's terrible. We went and saw North Forest a couple years ago. We weren't there to see them. Uh, we were there to see the the day before, and they just happened to be playing. And, and it, man, it was. Well, it was terrible. I mean, it was just just terrible, and it it's not been good down there for a long, long time. And you got that, and then you got okay. So, what is Fort Ben Willeridge? And and you know, I mean, I, well, that's the home of Thurman Thomas. That's uh, that's um, T.J. Ford's. Uh, yeah, know, right? that's what used to be called Sugarland, mm-hmm. uh, and that's where Thomas, Thomas Thurman. They, they were a five A power in Houston in the eighties, and look where they're at now in four A Division One. Mm-hmm. I have no clue what they're going to be like. Um, you know, if they're like Stafford, they're going to be competitive, and they're going to have years where they could win the region. Uh, Navasota's coaching change. Needville has a good crew coming back. Uh, to me, this this region's nine and ten though, man. Nine and yeah. ten, you know. It's just it's going to be about positioning. Uh, district nine, I don't think is the district of doom, but I think it's a really, really good district. It's tough. Uh, it's I, tough I, I, yeah, it's tough. But everybody, everybody that can be a true region threat takes a step back from where they were last year. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think Chapel Hill. The question mark will be uh, defense. Uh, for Chapel Hill, you still have the weapons on offense with Stewart and Brisbane, um, but they lose Day Day Ross in the middle. You lose Allen on the line. Um, you lose Mayfield out at corner in the in the uh, secondary. You got a lot of pieces you have to uh, replace on the defense. I, I think, and they'll still lose some on offense, but I think honestly, you still have your two workhorses on offense. Yeah, it's going to make make big plays in the in the games against. The it's going to be can can they find guys to stop now? You you do return Trevor Brooks uh, and at linebacker, but they're going to have to they're going to have to see about filling some holes, and that'll be that'll be what they. Of course, the the uh, I don't know if you saw the pre preseason or pre district schedule for Chapel Hill, but they're not going to. They're you're going to know how good they are and where they are uh, pretty quickly. Uh, see, we got we got White House. We're returning that rivalry back, which I'm excited about. That's a 
that's a rivalry back from when I was in school. Yeah, uh, you got Carthage Free District, which whew, doozy. Um, who else they got? Uh, I think we have Gilmer again. Yeah, I think so. And uh, so just those three right there. I mean, now is this, the, is this the last? Is this the first Chapel Hill White House game since the Mahomes one? It's bef- since before COVID. So we were scheduled to play then the COVID year when they switched okay. the, when in five A and six A started later. So that game went away and it hasn't gotcha. it hasn't returned back until this year. And okay. it's going to be a home and home. It used to be at Rose Stadium. Yeah, Rose Stadium. I called one of those. Yeah, I called two of those actually. I so called be- one when they came back for the first time, like in 03. Mm-hmm. They had done it in forever, and so they came back in like 04 or whatever. I did that one, and then Pat Mahomes, his senior year, Grant and I did that game. Yeah, was we, uh, year broadcaster. We did. Um, we we've done that, but now it's going to be in White House this year. It'll be the first time. That I can remember in a long, long time that the games have been a home and home series. So that's okay. gonna be that's gonna be fun. Yeah, uh, that's an underrated rivalry. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm I'm glad it's back. And you know, who knows how the numbers shake up? But I mean, I, I don't know that there'll ever be a district game again, just because White House is is quite a bit bigger than we are. But I love to see it either way. I think it's a it's a good game, and, and they've been better over the last couple of years. So oh, yeah. hopefully, going to be competitive. Well, and you know, in four district nine, to me, we, we talked a little bit about it. I, I, and I know I said it about Mount Pleasant, but Mount Pleasant also had struggled in five, a really bad mm-hmm. pine tree. Hasn't, you know, this isn't yeah. everybody. This isn't pine tree of 15 years ago, 25 years ago. This isn't a pine tree. That's every year two and eight. This is a team that's kind of learned how to be a consistent team on the five, a level. I think, you can make the case again, dropping down into the district they had actually might be tougher, but yeah. I think, you know, I think second, third, fourth. Well, I mean, I, I, I could say first, there's not a prohibitive favorite this year in district. No, I don't think so. I think to me that it's Kilgore, Lindale, Pine Tree and Chapel Hill, I think are my, my playoff teams. I don't know what order those are going to be in. But that's we have to see if Henderson, you know, if, if Henderson doesn't have the injuries they did last year, you know, they had seemed like they had something started really well. Mm-hmm. They played Marshall great, and Marshall came back at the end. But then they had their best offensive lineman like break his ankle, and then they, you know, they just lost so many people. Um, so if Clay Baker can get that the injury part, I think they can still be a threat at the bottom of this. Because I mean, you know, Palestine and Maybank, we don't know what they're going to be. Yeah, no, don't have any idea. I think, uh, I think Shine Tree, as we call him, is going to be the kind of the wild card here. How are they going to do dropping down? I think, yep. I think, you know. They competed in the five A. You know how is that going to come down? And I think they, uh, I think they beat Lindale last year, if I can remember correctly. Um, I know they played, um, so it'll be interesting to see how this works out. I mean, I, we had Pine Tree in our district when I was in school, uh, so you know it's they're they're not that much bigger. I'm I'm honestly surprised they haven't dropped before. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I I think. Chapel Hill and Kilgore, I still think, are your 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 top favorites. I mean, they're just just from um, what Chapel Hill's got coming back, and just Kilgore is just kind of a machine over there. They, you know, they they got athletes. They're going to pump them in and out. We'll see who who their next player to step up is. But I'm excited. Uh, I think it's going to be a good season. And like you said, the matchups of that first round that you you win that first round game, you. May get a few rounds of uh, an easier game. That first round may be a little tougher than the uh, the second round. Yeah, no, I totally agree, especially in some of these regions. All right, man. So where can, in, in case they didn't know, where can people find your games and y'all shows and all the stuff that you do? Sure. Uh, our website is netisin.live. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. You can find us um, by going to YouTube and typing in netisin live. We have all kinds of sports. We're right in the middle of baseball and softball season. So if you like, we have baseball and softball. We have basketball games all from back last year. We have football. We did some soccer. Uh, we have shows. We we do a little bit with you guys. We're going to be doing some some wrestling content for y'all. Uh, we jump in and try to do some things for L4 as well. So we're all over the place. But our, our YouTube channel, go subscribe to it. We've got lots of stuff. Oh, there it is. Got some games yeah. looking like we can you can load up the games. We have an app. Uh, you can go find it on the Apple and Android platform. Just search for NetSN. Um, we're adding more features to it. We just added forums uh, here over the last uh, 
few months that we're, we're getting ready. We've got some new football features that we're going to roll out before football season as well. So um, it's a place to get your scores uh, for football for East Texas. Uh, we, you can go in there and submit the scores while you're at the game. There may be some way to chat this year. We'll see. Uh, we've got some we got some features coming. So just go. It's free. You go in there. You can um, you create an account, and you can get on there and play around with it. If you ever have any uh, you know feedback or things that you want to see on the app or the website or anything, we we do take uh, suggestions because this we do this uh, for the sports fans. Uh, yeah. Email netsn live at gmail dot com. All right, man. Thank you. They were essentially invented back in 1950 by a Canadian doctor to prevent chipping of teeth because professional football players and all the other football players had no face mask. Their teeth were being chipped and this is what it was designed for. That technology has not changed in 67 years other than colors, they put some holes in it, they've done some things to it. It has not done anything different other than prevent chipping teeth, period. It was absolutely time to make a change. Mouth guards, most people are familiar with, go on the upper arch. That is the stationary part of the skull. Nothing changes or moves on that. And the bite is determined by the mandible or the lower arch. So when you take uh, a mouth guard and you flip it over and put it on the lower arch, then you can position it in your physiologic jaw position. And it's important to uh, fit that appliance to each person to correct their physiologic discrepancy. If we can't solve concussions uh, for football, uh, there's growing sentiment from especially the mothers out there. I don't want to put my kid in a sport that hurts them. We have had only four concussions out of over 2,000 uh, athletes who have worn Power Plus mouth guard technology. Physiologic rest position is the new mouth guard. All other mouth guards are obsolete and should not be worn. Why do it? when you can improve everything about it by using physiologic jaw position. It opens up a 100% muscle function, puts your muscles in its relaxed position so there's no inflammation and no swelling. The nerve information goes out to every muscle fiber and that's where you get increased strength and balance and performance. Terry Bennett back here. I do want to thank Brett for joining us here on the show to talk a little East Texas realignment. Uh, always good to talk to him. We'll be talking to him, of course, through the year. He'll be on our draft show uh, that's live Thursday. Again, I'll drink the coverage. Uh, intern Noe and I are doing the live draft on Thursday. We start at 6 p.m. and we'll go all the way through the first round. I think last year was like a four-hour show. Um, we also have happy hour tonight. That's live. Uh, just go through uh, Facebook, uh, out drink the coverage, or sideline to sideline, or on YouTube at L4 Media. And, and it's just intern knowing now. We just get together, have a couple drinks, talk whatever the sports thing is. Uh, like, you know, we do this every other week, except for next week. We're doing one as a uh, as a NFL draft recap. But like this week, we'll talk about OJ's death and what's that mean? You know. I'm, in the spot, the sports pop culture world, uh, talk to basketball playoffs. They just started talk to star, uh, hockey and the stars, uh, talk a little baseball, probably won't talk a lot of football tonight. NFL current, just because Thursday we have all that, that we're going to be talking about with the draft and stuff. And again, we start an hour early. The draft starts at seven. We'll start the live stream at six and kind of have an out drink the coverage up to date NFL news. Uh, also we're, we're recording our uh, look back season two this year. It's the top five Dallas Cowboy rivals. The fifth uh, rival video is already up. We put that up a couple of weeks ago, had some great numbers. You can check that out. It's the number five, the New York giants. Uh, we have our seventies honorable mention show that we did. Uh, you'll just have to see to understand what we mean by that. And then we'll be having the green Bay one. Uh, that's the fourth one. We'll be doing that one here in a couple of weeks, but again, want to once again, thanks Brett for joining us. It's good to talk to him about some of the uh, East Texas. And, and as I said, then, and I said, you know, I, I kind of was going back as I was uh, editing through this and, you know, East Texas kind of felt like it stayed a lot the same. There's some movement. Yes, of course. 
uh, but it doesn't feel like there was a ton of movement. So there's going to be a lot of familiarity uh, in, in this next re- uh, this next uh, realignment cycle. And I kind of like that. I do like the change of realignment. It's fun to see who goes up, who goes down, what districts teams end up in. But I do also like when you get districts that, you know, like Chapel Hill and them that have kind of been a core of them have been together for the most part for a while now. That makes it more enjoyable. A little bit of movement, but you keep those those district rivals more than just every other cycle. I feel sorry for some of those schools, those yo-yo schools that are either always bouncing up and down or they're always just kind of being moved around inside a region where they never can find a district home where they can establish true, true district rivals. And, you know, again, for all the talk about championships and stuff, we kind of sometimes, I think in today's sports world, and this is a this is a soapbox that I am on a ton and maybe it is a little bit of the get off, you know, the old man get off my lawn. But I just feel like in today's sports world, we're always just worried about the champions and who are the greatest, and everything else is trash. And you'll see people comment like that. Oh, so and so they lost in the second round of the playoffs. They're trash. Well, no, they made the second round of the playoffs. Um, and, and I think we've lost the 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 ability to just like enjoy sports for sports. And that's what those district rivals and homecoming. And this is not a knock on coaches. Cause I believe being on the coaching side there for a while, I get it. I understand, man, the, the homecomings are a pain in the butt, especially schools that really, really embrace it for coaches just because their players are being pulled all different ways. But let's also remember as coaches too, that those are supposed to be really cool moments for the kids to be able to play homecoming, especially again in those communities where homecoming is taken very, very seriously and and people actually do come back to the town for that weekend. And and yeah, you want to win, but sometimes the moment's just as important. And and I think we've lost that in the sports debate. And that's one of the things that in turn, Noah and I are trying to bring back without drink to coverage. And I think what Grant and I do really well on sideline to sideline championships are great. We get involved in that. We want to pick the greatest, but also just enjoy your moment, man. Enjoy the high school football moment or enjoy enjoy whatever moment it is. Life's too serious nowadays. We don't have to always be debating who's the greatest of all time and everybody else is trash. Just enjoy the sport. And we do hope you enjoy us listening. And again, uh, we'll be dropping a couple sideline to sideline S2S sports episodes a week going forward now, whether it be me talking with media members uh, or me talking with coaches, uh, or, or, or we might even do a couple fan question shows. And by the way, you can email the show happy hour, ODTC show at gmail.com. Uh, if you want a high school question, we talk, we talk anything anybody wants us to talk about on those live happy hours. And again, those are consistently every other Monday to calibrate. Uh, there's one tonight, April 22nd. We will also have one on the 29th, and then we're actually about to have three in a row, and technically we're going to have had five in a row, but usually those are every other week. I do appreciate everybody for joining us. Hey, I'm telling you all right now, and I know I say this all the time, and I lead with a lot of the show during the season about how we're already in week one, we're already in week five and all that, but we're already almost to May. Uh, it, football's right around the corner, and if you you know the summer's going to be here and, and pass us really quick. And Grant and I are going to be sitting in this studio talking all the big you know the questions that we love to talk about and all that kind of fun stuff really really quick. Again, we'll start those in July. But again, I appreciate everybody joining us. Until next time, this has been Power Plus Mouth Guard. By the way, remember Power Plus Mouth Guard. Mouth guard that can help you whether you play sports as a teenager, you're a weekend warrior adult, or you play college or professional. And we have some college players that listen to us, so y'all check this out. This is a mouth guard that's not only going to help you uh, against concussions, but it'll help you perform better on the field. Promo code uh, twenty or S two S twenty twenty four. Just go to powerplusmouthguard.com and they will take care of you. We really appreciate them being title sponsor of Sideline to Sideline and being the sponsor of our uh, coaches school shows and those, man, we had so much fun last year and we're going to do all those again. As I got, I can't remember where I put the show. I don't even know what this is. We got to make sure I got to check this out. Oh, no, we don't want that one. That is not the one we want. I like to play that when it's grant because he hates it so much. I think it will do this one here. All right, there we go again. You can follow us on Twitter at grand Terry. You can email us uh, at grant and Terry S2 S sport.com. Find our podcast only shows, uh, s2sgrantandterry.com. Find the video shows on YouTube at L4 Media Company. And until next time, I'm Terry Bennett, and this has been the Power Plus Mouth Guard, sideline to sideline.